Okay, well, welcome back to part three of my Stargate blog. Um, I'm numbering these so they're easier to manage. And, uh, each one has a different section about things in my notebook that I've uh, I've written about major major sections and uh, and so on. Okay, but uh, this time uh, we're going to get into the dirt of uh, the Stargate or, or wormhole technology, and I'm going to tell you basically how to build one. Um, and this is probably the part that gets me into a lot of trouble. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't want me telling this, but I'm going to do it anyways. You only live once, so just do it. Okay, um, we all know about what the Stargate is, uh, or a wormhole device. Um, as we'll see later, the st a Stargate that you would use for interstellar travel is actually a lot more complex than just a simple wormhole device. Um, not to mention it requires a lot more power. Okay, um, but anyways, um, yeah, what we have is a, a Stargate just like on the TV series, is a ring-shaped device. Okay, like that. Granted, it's going to be a little bigger if you're going to walk through it, not unless you're a mouse. Um, but anyways, um, this, uh, the Stargate, is really a series of solenoid coils in a particular arrangement. Um, and this really is what's going to tap into the, the tetrahedronal um, gravity energy, and we're going to manipulate it um, until we we start modifying the space geometry. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to eventually release a video that is going to explain how and why these um, uh, these waves interact with each other in a in the series that they do um, is very important. It's very interesting, and more importantly, you find clues in all of these ancient languages, ancient religions, and ancient architecture, okay? Uh, moving on, moving on. Okay, so uh, a basic wormhole device is going to have a minimum of four electromagnetic coils, okay? And what we have, we have, we'll just talk about the first two sets of electromagnetic coils. Okay, as we explained before, how scalar waves are created, and we're going to create them in a, an electrogravity wave, okay? Okay, now, what we have is, imagine we have two rings, two solenoid-shaped coils, like that, use my hands here, and um, we put them next to each other in parallel, and one is spinning this way, the one is spinning that way, uh, the electromagnetic fields at least. Um, and now, in between where that's, uh, there's a space in between, um, like I said before, we're going to have our, our vortex waves spiraling up and down simultaneously, okay, and um, so that's our first electrogravity wave. And um, now when we uh, we put the, uh, the other two coils right in front of there, um, that's also going to create another electrogravity wave. And so what we're having is we're having a gravity wave interfering with another gravity wave um, so basically, it's a, a scalar wave interacting with a scalar wave, um, and that's going to create a special vortex, 
um, and this is what's going to allow us to to access these hyperdimensional fields, these, this hyperspace field. Um, the, the amount of technology that we can create just by understanding this concept alone is is completely amazing. It'll it'll blow your mind. Um, in fact, I'm just tapping the surface the surface of it now. Um, uh, just for a little teaser, um, we probably can create something such as um, an ion shield shaped like a bubble or shaped like anything else we want uh, using this wormhole technology. Uh, we can create. Um, we could create a sort of cloaking field, but it, it wouldn't actually be cloaking. Um, you would be seeing through it, uh, but at the same time, uh, anything that passes through this field uh, is just going to go right through it and uh, pop out on the other side of it. I'm going to explain that later because um, it needs pictures and we need to get a a really good understanding on how the Stargate works. Um, okay, but back to how it's designed. Okay, so now we know that when we have scalar wave, we need two electromagnetic waves. All right. Now, um, we also know that there, there needs to be a space in between these two opposing waves, and that space is where our hyperdimensional field, or in this case our, our electro electrogravity field, is going to appear, okay? Now, um, how about we put a, another space in between there, you know, after those uh, first uh, two coils, and then, you know, after that space, we put another, another set of electromagnetic um, coils, scale the wave coils, basically. Um, that will be created another one. Okay, now we have these two. We have these two electrogravity waves. One's going this way. One's going the other way. Looks like, um, yeah, something like that. Um, okay, so the the gravity waves are spinning in opposite directions, and this is going to cause um, a space field. Okay. I guess we can call this hyperspace. Yeah, uh, you know it's 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 not in our real three D space, um, but it's going to you know never mind. It's not really important at this point. In fact, names aren't really important as long as you know what's going on. Um, okay, and, and so basically, what's going to happen is if we put enough energy into this um, this device with these, these sets of coils. Um, and keep in mind, this is not DC energy. This is not pulsed DC energy. This is AC energy. This is a very smooth waveform because we need this to interact with nature's fields. We're not trying to create our own laws, our own little um, isolated system because nothing in nature is isolated. Everything is dynamic. All right. Um, and like I said, when we put enough energy into this, um, there, there's a certain threshold that has to be obtained within the electromagnetic energy. Um, you can call it a sweet spot if you want to, um, if you're into that. Uh, I am. <laughs> so, um, and, and just as a, a kind of a side note, um, if you're going to be doing some, some other research around uh, stargates and portals and things like that, um, there's a, an Italian guy named uh, Ferlini. Um, I have his book, a scanned copy of his book, talking about some kind of portal. Actually, the name of his book is called La Barra Magnetia. I think I pronounced that right. It's, it's written in Italian. I haven't finished 
Um, I haven't finished translating it yet. Uh, I translated like the first 20 pages. It's really interesting. Uh, a friend of mine that can speak Italian, he's actually, he is Italian, um, he told me what the book is about and what some of these experiments that uh, Mr. Ferlini did way back in like the 1930s, 1940s, some crazy shit. Um, but anyways, it is going to take a lot of electromagnetic energy. It's not possible to create this much energy, generate this much energy, but it's not going to be coming out of a Duracell battery or a battery from your, your laptop computer. It's, it's quite a bit. Um, so, anyways, yeah, like we, like I said, you know, there's this this extra. Um, this third field flux that um, is going to be in the middle of these two electrogravity waves. This is the sweet spot. This is our event horizon. Uh, and this is where, this is the point where, you know, point A and point B become the same thing. Um, and once you understand this, once you start understanding how to make field fluxes in various geometries, you are going to be understanding things that haven't been understood for probably thousands of years. And if there are some people that have been able to understand these things in the last thousand years, uh, 500 years, they're, they're probably, I don't know, maybe a member of some secret society or something that collected this information. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really into conspiracy theories. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of conspiracies out there uh, or a lot of hidden information. I don't think hidden information is a, is a conspiracy. I think it's just some people know that Generally, the human population, as we know it, is not ready for this. Even you know these, these videos that I'm releasing, I I was going back and forth um, whether to release them or not, and I, I finally figured out. Uh, I finally decided, you know, what the hell? Um, you know, we're human. We're probably not going to stop ever stop killing each other. Uh, well, you know, at least the last 6,000, 10,000 years or so, even before that, um, we we spent most of our existences, uh, you know, killing each other off and, and so on. It's amazing we're still around. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm releasing all of this. It's going to be public information. Um, I'm expecting a lot of hate mail. I'm expecting a lot of people flaming me, flaming me on the messages, uh, and so on. Um, but I'm going to flame back. Um, fight fire with fire, as they say. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to say too much with uh, the rude replies coming back to you, you know, assuming you're flaming me, um, I'm just going to give you evidence. And eventually, if you don't like what you're hearing, if you think I'm crazy, then go away. It's that simple. Um, okay, so yeah, we, um, so far, to summarize, um, we got the Stargate device. It has four independent electromagnetic coils. Uh, there's a massive amount of, flow of energy flowing through these through these conductors, creating a massive electromagnetic field, massive magnetic field. Okay. Um, of course, when when we turn these these on all at the same time, the electromagnetic wave um, is going to disappear, and we get this hyperdimensional field. Our um, event horizon appears. Um, I'm not seeing what the event horizon looks like. Um, 
I'm not going to tell you everything uh, because I I'm not going to spoon I'm not going to spoon feed you. Um, if you're if you're watching this, I'm pretty sure you're not a child, you're not a baby or anything like that. Um, you should be having a decent amount of education already. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to remember the, the time tables or anything like that. Uh, of course, I had to teach my students that this week. Quite fun, actually. Uh, if you play the right game with, with children, you know, learning, education, it's quite fun. Uh, and of course, they're children, so they're not as, as stiff and stuffy as uh, adults and so on, you know. Uh, Chinese businessmen are the worst students you could ever have uh, for language students or for uh, for for anything really uh, stuck in the ways. Old men are like that, I guess. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm rambling. I do that sometimes, sometimes longer than others. It's been oh my god, 16 minutes. Okay, so right, I need to summarize everything that. Um, that I've said here. Okay, so starting from the beginning, we have the um, Stargate. Um, this is basically uh, a representation of the tetrahedronal cosmological model that we're thinking about. Um, uh, or if you want to think of it in, in double um, or more modern terms, uh, uh, it, this is the the, the toroid. Um, the toroidal cosmological model, which is probably the most accurate, I think it's the most accurate. Um, uh, okay, and, okay. So yeah, we have our we have four independent uh, electromagnetic coils. We turn them on. Uh, in between each of these each of these these coils, there is going to be uh, uh, a field flux area. Uh, you know, we're, we're not going to put the, the coils right next to each other, touching each other. There's got to be a, a field flux uh, for the zero-point field to be manipulated, to be swirled, if you will, by the uh, electrogravity waves, okay? Um, so we're going to have two of these field flux um, areas, and they're going to be creating electrogravity waves that are spinning in different directions, okay? And uh, in the middle of these uh, of these two um, sets of coils, there's going to be another field flux area, field flux space, and um, this is where our event horizon is going to occur. Okay, um, that's that's really all there is. That's the, the basic concept of how to build a stargate. Um, Granted, you probably can't do this um, with copper wires. They'll get hot and probably explode if you put this much energy into them. Um, well, if you make one large enough to step through, you know, like 20 foot or something like that. Um, it, it's just the, the wires are going to get too hot. They're going to melt. Um, all right, so... That's really all you need to know about the, the basic Stargate design. Um, okay, and uh, like, like always, if you have any any questions, um, go ahead and, and send me a message. Um, of course, during this video, I didn't show you any pictures or anything. I do have a lot of pictures that I've drawn and, and come up with myself so that you can understand this better. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to put them at the end of this video um, to to better understand everything. Um, so um, thanks for watching and take a look at some of the, these uh, these pictures and um, enjoy. Okay, see ya.